Hey there, Rockwell and Bren, and anyone else who uh, may be watching this evening. I hope everyone is doing great or staying safe. Um, I hope you are getting excited about the possibility of things opening up um, slowly at first. Um, I want you to know that your elders and your staff of your church, we are praying and we are uh, reading and we're talking to folks and we will be meeting together to talk about what does it look like for us to begin to open up church, looking towards fully everyone being able to uh, come back together. This will probably happen slowly at first as we uh, trust the authorities that God has placed over us, but just know that we are continually praying for you and we want the best for you. All of you have done so well in this uh, difficult time as we have been apart. I'm so thankful to hear uh, people writing notes to each other and people taking it upon themselves to call the entire church and, uh, and, and others and folks dropping by and leaving uh, different gifts on, on folks' uh, porch and different things like that. That has just been outstanding. It's been a lot of fun for us. We've actually met some of our neighbors down the way that we may have never met uh, had this not happened. I was in a uh, store uh, just uh, the other day and talking with a, an acquaintance, a, a guy I had met a while back, and he was talking about when we fully reopen, looking forward to coming to our church. Another guy who was listening to our conversation said, you know, I haven't been at church for two years, but during this season, I've been watching a number of church uh, services that are happening, and uh, he said, after all of this breaks free, after we are able to go back, he's going to be looking for a church. Um, of course, in the midst of that, I said, hey, uh, what about our church? Um, so, it will be exciting as we look forward to coming back together. Uh, I just thank you for your faithfulness and your giving as well. Um, it has been uh, truly remarkable to see how God can work even in the midst of a uh, distressed, difficult situation. Well, let's get into the text. Ephesians. If you have your Bibles... Turn to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians is one of the prison epistles that, that Paul is writing in, in the midst of being under house arrest and at, at best, at worst, being in essence chained to, uh, to some of the Roman guard. Um, Ephesians is broken down into two distinct parts. The first three chapters are indicative. Um, an indicative statement is, this is just the way it is. And Paul, in the first three chapters of Ephesians, is going to say things like, like exalting Christ as the Son of God, and, and He is all-powerful, and He is amazing, and, 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 and God showing His love through the sacrifice of Jesus for us. He's going to say things like, in Ephesians 2, uh, verses 8 and following, we are saved by grace through faith and this not of ourselves. That's an indicative statement. It's just the way it is. And then the last three chapters, 4, 5, and 6, are imperative. Because of the indicative, then this is what we do. We can never get those two backwards. Sometimes in my heart, I want to do the imperative so I will earn the indicative. I want you to think about that. Sometimes in my heart, I want to do the imperative so that I will earn the indicative. But what happens when we do that? We and then take credit. 
But see, God gets all the credit and the glory and the honor for His amazing grace. That's why He can say His burden is light. And it is. It is a good, light burden. Now, right in the middle of those two sections, right at the end of chapter 3 of Ephesians, Paul goes into this amazing prayer and a time of honoring Christ. It's just, a, it's just he burst forth in worship. I want you to read with me in Ephesians chapter 3, beginning in verse 14. For this reason, now what is the reason? It's because of all of the indicative that God is love, that he has given his one and only son to save those who would put their faith in him. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant to you to be strengthened with the power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I want to pause there just for a minute. That word dwell, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. It happens to be that this evening and most Wednesday evenings I'm recording from my living room in which, in the home in which the Bryan family dwells. Now that word dwell, if we translate it literally, means to settle down into. We are settling down into this home at 510 Third Street. It means we are making it our home. Now here's the amazing thing about that term dwell. Two and a half plus years ago when we moved in, I thought we were settled into. We put the furniture in, we hung a few things on the wall, and I thought we were done. But all of you who are watching knows that that was not true because there was a better picture to go on the wall or the couch didn't look just right over there or the bed wasn't in just the perfect position or we got rid of one piece of furniture and got another piece of furniture or there was a clock that needed to go over there or not go over there and that one thing needed to go in the garage and something else needed to come in. And at what point does dwelling stop? At what point does settling down into stop? Well, it really doesn't, does it? It just keeps going. And that is what Jesus Christ is doing in you by faith. He is continually settling down into your heart. And this is the part of the gospel in which we call sanctification. He is making your heart his home. He is making your heart his home. Verse 17, so that Christ may dwell, may settle down into your hearts through faith that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God, And then he closes this section with this amazing, worshipful statement. 
this doxology. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think in the ESV or imagine in the NIV, all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. Now, what is the power at work within us? It is the power of the beloved Son and the Holy Spirit at work within us. The same power that caused Jesus to be resurrected is working in us to make us holy. And Paul says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. What are you asking for? God is able to do even more than that. What are you praying to God about? If it is, if it is within his will, he is able to do it and even more. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. You know, what a powerful statement. What a powerful prayer and a powerful doxology. Uh, church, no matter where you find yourself this evening, um, God is able to come into your heart and do more than you have ever asked or imagined. He's able to work through these vessels, these, as Scripture says, these clay vessels, these, these pots of clay that are very brittle and do amazing things. Let me give you one encouragement, and we'll pray together, and the lesson is yours. The encouragement is this. Ask big. Think big. And pray big. We serve a God who created the world. We serve a God who heals the lame. We serve a God who raises the dead. We serve a God whose son was born of a virgin, walked and lived a perfect life, was killed for you and I, and then was raised three days later from the grave. We serve a God who resurrects the dead. And it is his great desire to love you and I, to serve us, to sanctify us, to change us, so that we can impact the world for his good glory. There is a, uh, a prayer, an old prayer. I've shared with you before that I love reading old prayers. The language and the way that they're written is just amazing. And it helps me to pray bigger and broader. But there is a prayer that is, uh, is said to be of Sir Francis Drake just before he circumnavigated uh, the world by ship. It goes this way. Maybe this is a prayer that will launch us into praying big to a God who is all-powerful, all-loving, 
all know. It goes this way. It says, Disturb us, Lord, when we are too well pleased with ourselves, when our dreams have come true because we have dreamed too little, when we arrive safely because we sailed too close to the shore. Disturb us, Lord, with the abundance of things we possess. We have lost our thirst for the waters of life. Having fallen in love with life, we have ceased to dream of eternity. And in our efforts to build a new earth, we have allowed our vision of the new heaven to dim. Disturb us, Lord, to dare more boldly, to venture on wider, wilder seas, where storms will show your mastery, where losing sight of land we shall find the stars. We ask you to push back the horizons of our hopes and to push into the future in strength, in courage, in hope, and in love. In the name of Jesus, our eternal captain. Amen. Oh, church, let that be our prayer. Father God, we do love you and we praise you. In the name of your Son, the resurrected Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Help us to pray boldly. Help us to dare boldly. Not for our own glory, but for your glory. Help us to pray for those around us that, that honestly, we've given up on. Our assumption is that, that they... They will never come to love your son, Jesus. Help us to pray boldly for them and to speak boldly for you. Father, help us to serve those that we love and those that we do not love. Because we know your amazing grace and your amazing love. Father, we pray that you will allow us in your goodness and your grace and your mercy to come back together as a corporate group soon. But Father, help us to be faithful and confident in what you are doing now. Help us to serve and love those that we come in contact with every day. Help us to love our families during this time. And make the most of every opportunity, every word, every deed. We praise you in the name of Jesus. And we praise you for the indwelling, sanctifying, convicting, teaching Holy Spirit. In your son's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you soon.